This is my grandmother. She's visiting her parents' grave in the town where she was born. It was one of her last wishes before she died. En nou ben ik hier en nou kom ik hier nooit meer natuurlijk. Dit is echt ook een afscheid weer, hè? Al is het maar van een graf. Wat zei je, uw vader toen uh, hij overleed? Hoe is het mogelijk? Toen was hij er niet meer. Ik weet niet wat hij gezien heeft, dat weet niemand. Ook zoiets vreemds. Ja. Ja, hij zei, hoe is het mogelijk? En toen ging het kaarsje uit. I was born in november 1966 in the Netherlands. My parents were 20 and 21 years old. And three years later, my sister was born. They were a young working couple who wanted to explore their freedom. This got slightly out of hand. My sister and I were confronted with alcohol abuse, domestic violence, neglect and more. When I was 12 years old, my parents got divorced and I started smoking. We stayed with our mom and moved every year to another house. By the age of 20, I had moved 12 times. This all changed me from being an open, curious and happy kid into a confused, hurt and introverted adolescent. I also discovered that I was, in general, more attracted to girls than boys, which was a challenge as well. At the age of 15, I wanted to commit suicide. Luckily, I had my creativity, which helped me to express myself. I started playing drums in my first band and used drugs to escape the painful reality. When I was 17, I stopped smoking pot and went to art school. I moved to the city to live on my own. Life didn't make a lot of sense to me but I felt there had to be more to it, so I started searching. In a period of about 35 years, I got into Theosophy, Chakras, Auras, the I Ching, Channeling, Meditation, Mysticism, Reincarnation, Yoga, Angel Cards, Crystals, Mudras, Astrology, A Course in Miracles, Affirmations, the Law of Attraction, The Secret, and even Tantra. I also started to do a lot of therapies because I was a mess and I needed help. I was depressed, had anxiety and panic attacks and nightmares. Every once in a while I dissociated from reality completely. At art school I worked like a madman for five years to get a grip on life and to express myself. I also started traveling a lot, first in Europe. And after that to the US. Denver and New York. I traveled by bus or hitchhiked. The photos I shot during traveling were made with the camera my granddad gave me. I shot mostly black and white and slides. Smartphones or Instagram weren't around yet. When I was 26, I toured with my own band through the USA. We played at South by Southwest and released several records and CDs and performed a lot. At 
At a certain point, doing rehearsals and shows felt like doing the same thing all over again. This was a slow death. And I wanted life, living a truly creative life. So I broke up the band. After I finished art school, I started to study at the Academy of Natural Medicine. I got to know a lot about herbs and kept my own herbal and vegetable garden. From my early 20s on, I had my own company as an umbrella for my creative and other work. During the years, I worked as an artist, musician, therapist, videographer, production coordinator, music producer, head of acquisitions and logistics, audiovisual event manager, photographer, business coach and private chef. I had several relationships during the years, but they didn't really work out very well. I think I wasn't really good at this. And there was no firm foundation to make things work well. To be honest, there is so much more I could tell you about the things I have experienced and done in my life. I'm old, you know. For instance, I built a solar-powered vehicle, together with a lot of people, and traveled the world in it. 25 kilometers an hour. It was one of the first crowdfunded projects in Europe, and it generated a lot of interest. Books, presentations, videos, interviews, TV, etc. Afterwards, I had a huge burnout and encountered the deepest depression and darkest hours of my life. I was all by myself in my own world of imploded grief and loneliness, floating in a vast and loveless universe. I again wanted to commit suicide. The reason I didn't was that I didn't want to burden other people with my decision. Luckily, with the help of some friends and therapists, I got out of it. I did a lot more traveling, and in 2016, my partner and I decided to spend the winters in Spain. Later, we started giving individual retreats and business retreats on demand, from our place close to the Mediterranean Sea. We offered coaching and counseling in a high-end personal setting for business leaders and entrepreneurs who were standing at the crossroads in their lives. One of the most important things we started doing to get the best results for our clients is that we started praying every morning because we knew we couldn't do it on our own and we realized that there was somebody or something bigger than us who could help us. The results became hugely successful a lot of business leaders, CEOs and entrepreneurs rated us with nines and even tens. At the same time, something started moving in my spiritual life. During my life, I had spent a lot of time, energy and money to fill the void of loneliness within me. There was this disconnectedness and a yearning for being totally embraced by love. I also wanted a solid foundation in the truth. I had searched my whole life asking questions like, who am I? What is my purpose? What is the meaning of life? Is the world crazy or am I crazy? Who is in power in this world? Who is really in power? And so on. I was a truth seeker. And now was the time I wanted to know the real truth, because there had to be a truth. Not all things could be true at the same time, that didn't make sense. God had knocked at my door several times during my life already, but now he clearly drew me closer. I remember looking at the sky and sea, the birds and the palm trees from our place in Bia Hoyosa. As an artist, I had recognized the beauty of creation many times before. But now I realized in my innermost being that God had created this all for us to see Him. The universe as a token of His greatness. The waves, the sun and the plants, the feet we walk on and the air we breathe. 
ears to hear and voices to sing with. Mountains to cherish and snow to play in, the stars, he created it all, to perfection. He had done everything for me, but what had I done for him? I didn't even recognize him, let alone thank him. I didn't see that he had walked with me every moment of my life. He had tried to reach me so many times, but I almost never saw it. I was blinded by all the nonsense of the world, but now I saw him in all his glory, in all his greatness. And the strange thing is, this wasn't just a thought or a feeling, this was an absolutely overwhelming realization of the truth. At the same time, I also felt repentance and remorse because I had been so ignorant and ungrateful. The whole experience made a huge impact on me and changed my life in more ways than I would ever expect. We both started reading the Bible. It was one of the spiritual books I hadn't read yet. I thought it was old-fashioned and parts of it were false. I had many prejudices against it. Also against Christians, by the way. But things turned out to be very different than I thought. I thought I was living a life of freedom and was very tolerant and welcoming to other views. Now I realize I was living in a very, very small box. I did a lot of research and realized that these 66 books that were included in the Bible written by more than 39 writers, in a period of 1600 years, were true. I didn't think it was true. I didn't feel it was true. I realized it was true. Even more, I found out by reading it that this book was very much alive. And, as crazy as it sounds, it started reading me. It slowly but surely changed me to the core. And slowly but surely, I started to build a relationship with Jesus. Because in the end, Christianity is not about religion, but about having a personal relationship with God. It is very personal, very intimate, and very amazing. Now, if you listen to the first 15 minutes of this video, it was all about me. Me, myself and I. Go ahead, listen back. All the people mentioned in this story were actors on the sidelines. And I was the center of my own private universe. I was my own God, with my own rules, my own needs and will. My life, my career, my relationships my successes and my failures. It's like an obituary of a deceased person. And in a way that is true. Because only now I realize that life was never about me. At all. It's all about him. It's not about self-realization. It's about him. It's not about happiness. It's about him. It's not about riches, it's about him. It even is not about signs and wonders, it's only about him. This transformed my whole life, work-wise and privately. My partner and I live a life of celibacy and have a loving platonic relationship, which we happily dedicate to God. Make no mistake, this is no sacrifice. Everything falls in place when you follow this path and build upon your relationship with God. This is real freedom. It's not about doing whatever you want to do. It's not about your job, money, travels, or how many people you have sex with. Real freedom and love fills the emptiness within when you start doing His will. God has called me to use the creative talents he gave me for him, for his goals and for his glory. 
the only thing that could be of importance in the story you just watched is when it leads you home to him. By the way, do you know what my grandmother always did for me? Every single day, she prayed for me. This is the greatest gift she could have ever given me. Thank you, Oma. It worked out pretty well. <laughs>